let's see what making the case for Michael Jordan is talking about. Boy, uh, let's get it. So today I'll be making the case for Michael Jordan mm -hmm. as the greatest basketball player of all time. Oh man, it is bringing me chills already. What? It's bringing me chills. You know what I'm saying? It ain't he gonna tell me? Maybe he gonna tell me something I don't already know. But I don't think he gonna tell me that I don't already know, man. That man's the goat. Well, what can I say? Exactly. What on earth can I say about Michael Jordan's case as the greatest basketball <laughs> player to ever live that hasn't been said before? I don't what do you know. Think bro. I'm gonna talk about that didn't get covered in the 10-hour documentary that Let's premiered dance. at a time oh, yeah, when there tough. was no other sports content. There's no forgotten game that I can tell you about that shows just how good Jordan was. Damn, them We've graphics all seen crazy. those games. Every possible angle of the Michael Jordan case has been dissected inside and out. This there definitely are no 99 original overall. takes when it comes to the subject. Michael Jordan is a ubiquitous figure in large mm -hmm. part because he was and is a brand. And what do the American whole brand love goated. more than a good brand? The good people at McDonald's, Nike, oh, that Michael, Gatorade, and the NBA itself succeeded in with that making McDonald's. sure that damn near everyone in the world knew that Michael Jordan played in the NBA and that he was a winner. I mean, honestly, when you see the number 23 anywhere, don't you immediately think of Michael Jordan? I think of Draymond Green. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, <laughs> even if you're a LeBron fan, you have to admit that that is Michael Jordan's number. And the craziest part about the <laughs> Jordan real. experience is that as he became a global icon, he did nothing but continue to deliver the goods. Ooh. What iconic moment can I show you that you haven't already seen a hundred times? If His you can show me some, the game winner in the '82 NCAA If you can show me some I ain't never seen, but I'm gonna get free throw line for that. Dunk. He invented in all the stuff. 63 points against the '86 Celtics. I ain't gonna the lie. Shot. I ain't gonna lie, Bird, hey, he never really beat Bird, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I appreciate all y'all that was in my comments talking about Bird. Like, he never really beat Bird, though. He was like 0-6 or something like that, wasn't he? So, hey, 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 that might elevate Bird on my on way. But he just got too much stuff after that. His so. spectacular move. Once he got over the hump, he the just shrug. never... You know what I'm saying? It's Mike. The double nickel against the Knicks. The flu game. Passing mm. to Steve Kerr for championship number five. It's those These moments, boy. and moments burned into every bro, basketball got... fan's consciousness. Every bro, he one got of too many good moments. Served to propel Jordan higher and higher in the cultural zeitgeist. I about to say, until looking like Kobe of, out here. <laughs> maybe the five most famous human beings on the planet. And yet, the inevitable passage of time has eroded the consensus around Jordan's GOAT status. That's wild. Especially with younger people who might not have been alive to see That's him That's wild. Play. Somebody gotta remind these young boys. There aren't young people who don't hey, see him as a GOAT, ooh, but it's not as air damn, as it once bro, was. That's just now, I'd hate still, to speculate on behalf of the entire sauce. generation of basketball fans, but here I go anyway. I was 516 days old when Michael Jordan won his last championship. Oh. I can't remember much about it. And I think that people who didn't live through Jordan's prime are a little tired of hearing how great he was. Oh, that's course, all it is. People want to be alive to see greatness. They want to be able to say, I saw the best ever. Now, I don't think that makes it right, but it's part of the explanation. Oh, the other yeah. part is that Jordan's celebrity seems to cloud everything he did. Oh, At times, okay. it feels almost like propaganda. Everybody, times have you seen everybody this? want to be a part some of it. Some huh? basketball account on Twitter or somewhere on the internet celebrates the anniversary of something that, say, Wilt Chamberlain did. And in the comments, somebody says something like, Wilt Chamberlain, the most dominant player I ever saw. And mm. then someone comes back unfailingly and says, in all caps, Did you never see Michael Jordan play? <laughs> it's not just that you have to acknowledge Jordan uh, as the GOAT. It's that you oh, cannot that talk work. about the merits of anyone else's case. The internet oh. would have you believe. Oh, that pisses me off. I ain't gonna lie, that do piss me off, bro. That really does piss me off. I say, yeah, Jordan, yeah, man, that dude's nice. Or oh, I say, oh, I say, uh, LeBron, yeah, man, dude's nice. But he's just, you know, he not Jordan. Oh man, da 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 da. Jordan sucks. If they think LeBron is better, or if I say, yeah, man, I mean, Bird, yeah, he's nice. He's up there. Da 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 da. Magic Johnson did this. Magic. I'm like, bro. Relax, bruh. Relax. I can acknowledge that there are a plethora of great players that has blessed the league. You know what I'm saying? Leave me alone. 
Have you believe that Michael Jordan won every game he played and mm. made every shot he took? And that kind of talk breeds resentment Ooh, from people yeah, who want tough. to appreciate other players' accomplishments. I ain't gonna lie because to you. Them. He wasn't perfect. He didn't win every game. He didn't make every shot. Ooh, God, and ooh, you that's... can have a debate about who the greatest of all time is. I ain't gonna lie, them Jordans ain't the so best shoes to play in either. I thought this was supposed to be a video about why he is the GOAT. It is. All of that is just to say that that's how this is going to go. I'm not going to try to convince you that he was perfect. Mm -hmm. Because if you can separate the legend and the basketball player, it's more than enough. Oh, and by the way, we're going to ignore his Wizards career as much as we can. It's just the right thing to do. I so, mean, come on, it's the Michael Wizards. Jordan, the basketball player. And he was still cooking have? on the Wizards. He still has the moments on the Wizards. seasons with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan was a six-time champion, six-time finals MVP, five-time regular season MVP. Never a lost. time All-Star, was selected to 10 first-team All-NBAs, mm -hmm. made second-team All-NBA in his rookie season, Ooh. was the defensive player of the year in 1988, had Ooh. nine all-defensive first-team selections, Ooh. was a 10-time scoring leader, and in college won the 1982 NCAA championship and was named the 1984 NCAA player of the year. I mean, yeah, Without man, a, a word of analysis or commentary, that resume is screaming about one of the most decorated <laughs> oh and successful God. basketball players in history. Jordan's this dude finishing like he invented this finish right here. When you do, when you do those, which I know about that. You got the ball and then you, you lay it up and then you, Hit your own wrist right there. Give you, give you just a little, bit, a little bit more English on that thing. You know what I'm saying? That's Mike Case right there. is related to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's in that you can pick from just about any criteria you want to. And you'll find oh, enough oh evidence oh to support Oh my God. Either. Hold on. Hold on. I have not seen that block before. <laughs> Did y'all just pick hold from on. just about Look at that any block, criteria though. you want to. He got me. And you'll oh, find all my feet evidence block with the left. That's crazy. <laughs> that you can pick I don't think I've seen that black before. You I ain't gonna lie to, to you. And you'll find enough evidence oh to support God. his reputation. Jesus. First and foremost, Jordan might well be the greatest scorer in basketball history. Ignoring his two years with the Wizards, Jordan's scoring Ooh, average was uh -huh. 31. Yeah, Bird did that, but guess what? Mike right there. Michael Jordan. One more time. Jordan's scoring <laughs> hey, average uh -huh. in basketball history. Uh huh. Ignoring Look at all that touch. Hey man, the man can shoot Jordan's too. Scoring average. I gotta do that behind the back boy shots too, and that thing probably counts. Michael too. Jordan in a Bulls jersey scored more points on an average night than any other player ever, yeah. including his Wizards tenure. He averaged 30.12 points per game, still <laughs> the highest of any player ever, beating out <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain by a few decimal places. The whoa, style. Whoa, for real? I thought Wilt was out here averaging 50. He is even more dominant than that. God damn. The style of Jordan's play was only matched by the substance of his game. Every ounce of athleticism that brought comparisons to Dr. J was mm -hmm. matched by footwork that could only be <clears throat> seen in players like Hakeem Elijah. <clears throat> His acrobatic layups are underscored by his unerring technique and it's like the total package. that make him a case study in fundamentals. At his peak, he tortured guards in the post. Elude see, 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 Jordan is the reason that some of these dudes that like heli athletic, heli athletic, they'll compare him to Jordan just because he heli athletic like that. But it's the athleticism because you can't really teach that athleticism. But it's the athleticism with everything that go with it. He maximized all that athleticism and nobody has been able to do it since. Eluded big men with his electric first step, developed into the best mid-range scorer of all time <laughs> of and all ran time. Phil Jackson's Midi. triangle for all it was worth. He had Midi. nearly every offensive facet Ooh, of the game in his buckets. toolbox and he pulled out that toolbox every bang, bang. night. Hey. He has the highest usage rate of all time, scoring <laughs> in volume on a nightly basis. <laughs> Get up here, but he Muggsy. also pushes advanced metrics and efficiency stats to their breaking points. He has <laughs> he the highest jump. player efficiency ranking ever, the highest offensive box <laughs> plus minus ever, <laughs> the fifth most win shares, the most win shares per 48 minutes, an outstanding mm. true shooting percentage, and so on. It is unfathomable to me that Ooh, Jordan that combines work. such unprecedented volume with mm, such pristine <laughs> efficiency. His opponents were allowed little reprieve on the other end of the floor, as Jordan quickly developed into one of the league's premier defenders. In 1988, Jordan led the league in scoring with 35 points a game, won the MVP, Goodness and gracious. was named Defensive Player of the Year after leading the league in steal. 
Oh my God, he's leading the league and all that. They hit that. Giannis out here doing something similar. Not gonna lie, quietly. What do you do again? The MVP. And MVP was named defense. Hold on. Hold on. League in scoring with uh, uh, hold on. the league's premier defenders. What year was in that? In 1988, Jordan 88. led the league in scoring with scoring? 35 points a game. Won the MVP, MVP and was named Defensive Player of the and Year defensive after leading the, year. the league in steals. Jordan defended a after leading the league in steals. Oh my God! He ain't, they ain't even they ain't even talk about the All Star. I think he won that dunk contest that year. Was All Star Game MVP too? Opponents like a shark smelling blood. He forced bad passes, contested shots, leapt passing lanes, all while talking enough trash to sell a pay per view fight. <laughs> there might not have ever been a more nightmarish matchup. Both ends of the floor. He could go into games, mess out tell of his own team to stay out of the way, dunk on his defender, and then put that guy in a straitjacket the second he crossed half court. And yet. Despite what do you think you're going? The you know, turn over. That he must have expended every night. Jordan was one of the most durable and consistent players of his generation. See, that's Aside what I like, bro. Injury shortened '86 season and his midseason comeback in '95. Jordan never missed more than four games in a single season. In eight of his Chicago seasons, he played all 82 games. Yeah, he man, I like that, man. I don't like all this, all this load management, man. But play every game, any coming, any coming at your throat. That's why he was the best. He ain't, go, he ain't giving up. He get, and he gonna trash talk you to death and all Basketball that too. Basketball game is to score more points than your opponent, oh right? So you'd love a player who can score a buttload of me. points. You'd also love a player who keeps the other team from scoring, from scoring points. Bunch. When you put those two things together, the best scorer ever and one of the most tenacious defenders in history, you get Michael Jordan, whose yeah, peak like, reaches into uncharted airspace. Yeah, nobody's Michael ever Jordan done it like at that. His best was better than everyone. Plain and simple, he would score, defend, and play in such a way that made winning second nature. No one else has ever tasted the air at the top of peak Jordan. Once he got to the top of that mountain, he was looking down at everyone else. Yeah. But what about before yeah. then? I hear the yeah. skeptics among you ask. Yeah. And that's a fair point. He yeah. wasn't always that guy. Before yeah. the Bulls broke through in 91, I'm trying to Jordan think of anybody who's defeat close. in the playoffs to the Milwaukee Bucks the Boston Celtics, and okay. most memorably, the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, it and was I've seen this misconception too. that those losses all took place <clears throat> while Jordan was still basically on his own without Phil Jackson and Scottie Pippen. Uh -huh, and that's uh -huh. obviously not correct. All four of the Piston losses took place while Scottie was on the team. And in what? 1990, Phil Jackson was the coach, and the Bulls won 55 games, just four fewer than the Pistons. You can blame okay. it on whatever. Injuries, the Pistons patented Jordan rules, and even Jordan himself. It's a fair point of criticism to point out that Michael Jordan's Bulls lost Dang. in the playoffs early. That was game seven? Oh, is it, oh the Pistons? Okay. In his career. Okay. However, okay, that was early. you can't stop the conversation there. Yeah, the yeah. Bulls got swept by the 86 Celtics, but come on. That it's team is pretty it. universally regarded as Bird's best team. And Ooh, yeah, them boys are stacked. Them C's? The seeds were stacked, uh-huh. How come Bird, Bird, hey, get Bird some love, man. And one of the best teams of all time after they went on to win the title. The fact mm -hmm. that Jordan hung 63 on them, a record that still stands, is outstanding. <laughs> the 87 Celtics also made the finals. So did the 88 Pistons, and the 89 Pistons, and the 1990 Pistons. Of Jordan's six pre-title playoff losses, Five of them made the NBA Finals, and three of them ended up winning the whole thing. Their losses, nonetheless. But it wasn't like he was being beat by the Washington Generals. He was losing and sharpening his teeth against the best. For whatever it's worth. And it's worth something. Speaking but of Phil and Scotty, another point of contention with Jordan's claim to the throne is the mm -hmm. fact that he played for the most decorated coach in basketball and with the best sidekick in sports, along with a team oh that God, did their jobs to a T. That one right there, this team right here is the best team, is the best team of all time. Everybody know they roll, everybody do their part and know they roll, man. And Sheesh. bought into the team. As for Scotty, there are some people out there who would have you believe that Scotty mm. Pippen was nothing more than a glorified role player. They'll say he didn't have the game to carry a team to a title, and he didn't have the aptitude to spend too much time in the spotlight. They'd have you believe that Scotty Pippen was nothing without Michael Jordan. And huh? that's ridiculous. 
Huh? You can disagree with me, but for my huh? money, Scottie Pippen is the best perimeter defender imaginable. He combined size with uncanny court vision a la Bird and LeBron. Nah, he he's, exactly he's LeBron but for LeBron. His spots and when to defer, and brought a component of selflessness and fraternity to the Bulls that might not have existed otherwise. You need those people, but look, look hear me out, hear me out. If, if Scottie Pippen was the leader of the team, then he would be LeBron James. LeBron James is Scottie Pippen 2.0. We've never seen such a thing. He's basically Scottie Pippen 2.0. Scottie Pippen was the truth, man. Or, or Scottie Pippen, LeBron James uh, uh, 0.5. <laughs> he was approachable and likable. The counterbalance to Jordan's but he's not supposed to be the intensity. leader. Most importantly, he supposed Scottie to be the, accepted and flourished. In he the glue, role. you know what I'm saying? Scottie that he Pippen the glue guy. He's not the leader of the team. Same with other players like Horace Damn. Grant and Tony Kukoc. Michael Jordan Except didn't win those championships alone, and those guys all deserve more recognition. When it comes to Phil Jackson, it's been fascinating to revisit Jordan's approach to the game and see how it changed under Jackson. Guys like Mike, Kobe, and Wilt all approached basketball in a similar way, in that they felt Give me the, the best chance their team had to win was for them to have the ball in their hands as <laughs> much the as possible. Get out These the days, way. we'd call what they did iso ball or hero ball. Isolate against the defender, tell everyone to get out of the way, and beat your man one-on-one. -on -one. Watching Mike's early years, it sticks out, painfully at times. Shooting over triple teams, refusing to give the ball up, even if a teammate had an open look. Kobe patterned his game. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I would rather, I would rather you want the ball and go shoot it every time, double, double triple team, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And me have to tell you to like, oh, slow down. Okay, you can pass every now and then. Rather than when it's the, when it's the good moment, oh, pass. Oh, oh, who's the open man? Who's the good man? Forget all that, man. That should be your last resort is what I'm trying to say. That's why, you know what I'm saying? That's why Jordan, man, you got it, dog. Game after Go. Jordan, Go and you can see the same tendencies. Will was, of course, a prolific scorer and record setter in his own right, and mm -hmm. did so in a manner that gained him the reputation of being selfish. But with Jackson's philosophical Bro, what's up with that defense? Just on a, just like, just like one time? Was, of course, what's up a with that scorer okay. and record setter in All his right. own what's right, up with this and D? did so in a manner that yeah, gained just, him man. the reputation. Look at this, look. Look at this. Is, is somebody playing deep? Look, 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 look at Buddy. Is he like, like what is this? He was like, man, get out Jackson's here. Philosophical I guess it's Will. influences, the triangle offense, and a stellar I guess if Giannis pass, came at me, Jordan I'd be like, man, what to do you dial those tendencies back and perfect his game, <laughs> resulting in one of the most dominant stretches any athlete has ever had in their sport. Of course, he still had the stuff to go and win his one on one battles, oh but God. he walked the line as well as anyone ever has. Kobe did the same thing. He won three championships with Shaq at the beginning yeah. of the decade of the aughts and yeah. finished the decade with back to back championships. Yeah, Kobe now, was who tough. Who was Kobe's coach during those championship Phil. years? Who was it that helped him tailor his game to a more mm. team friendly approach mm. so as to unlock the group's mm. championship? No, it was Phil. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson should, and does, get praise for managing some of the most eclectic locker rooms in basketball. Yeah, but you don't need you don't need the players to self-manage. You know what I'm saying? I need the players to go in and go ahead and do what they do, man. Satiating the some of the most headstrong egos in the world and providing an environment <laughs> where the most talked about team with the most popular athlete could do their jobs. The Bulls' success might not have been what it was without Scottie Pippen. It might not have happened without Phil Jackson and yeah, Horace Grant a and Tony storm. Kukoc and Steve Kerr and Bill Brown Cartwright Harper. and all of those guys. Basketball Tony Kukoc is was a out team here game after all. But <laughs> I used to fool with Tony Kukoc. But it's our that they might not get talked about as much as they should. We are the people who talk about these kinds of things and create the dialogue that takes place about them. That doesn't okay. somehow discredit what Jordan did for those teams or nullify what he contributed. Hey, yeah, Scotty was a up. perfect sidekick. Yes, Phil Jackson was a masterful coach. See, it's the thing we call him a sidekick. It's like these names is like, yeah, but he not like, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to say it. He not the sidekick. He's he's like a party in crime. You know what I'm saying? Y'all say names like that. So now nobody want to be the sidekick, quote unquote. He's not really a sidekick. Act like he's he not really like a side character. You know what I'm saying? He a main character. You know what I'm saying? They say stuff like big three now. So it's like, oh yeah, big three. That's what it really was. He got no sidekick. He a main character. 
Those things know. can still be true, and Michael Jordan can still be the Michael greatest of all time. <laughs> Scotty accepted his role on the team. He accepted that he God was going damn. to be the second guy. Crying. Jordan still had to go out there and do his job as the guy. He Ooh, still had to got set it the there. tone of every practice and every game. He had to put the ball in the hole, share responsibilities <laughs> guarding the other team's best player, take yeah. over when games started slipping out of hand, yes. and at the end of the game, take the last shot. It that's doesn't not, work unless Mike easy. does what everyone expects him to, <laughs> which is to be easy. the best player in the world. As for Phil, yes, it is true that he tempered Michael's worst impulses. He helped sand off the rough edges and align the team. But yeah, Mike still had to accept that coaching. He had Ooh, to adapt dude, his game and that, do yeah. the work. Plus, isn't it a coach's job to Bro, that's coach? Touch. Why is it a knock on Jordan that his coach was good at yeah, his coaching. job? <laughs> Michael Jordan doesn't deserve <clears throat> all of the credit for their success. But he does deserve the lion's share of credit because he shouldered the lion's share of responsibility of such an incredible team. How yeah. incredible of a team Rightfully were they? Rightfully so. Well, the 1996 Chicago Bulls finished the regular season 72 and 10. Mm. That's more wins than anyone had Damn, ever crossed. won, and a record that most people thought would never be broken. And not Damn. only were they such <laughs> a prolific regular season Ooh, team, okay, Steve. But they capped see you, Steve. off that season with a championship to deliver the most successful oh, season that put, any NBA Oh, team. Golden State, damn, Golden State, y'all had him. Y'all had him, damn. Team has ever had. Which brings us to another common Jordan barb. The fact that the NBA was, at the time, looking to capitalize on its enormous- You know what, that goes to the generation too. The, uh, the uh, winning ain't everything generation. That goes to the winning ain't everything generation. That's why, I mean, Oh, it's how you get there. We had fun along the way. We play good brand of basketball. No, man. Did you win? <laughs> but did you win? Damn, Golden State. Y'all was almost there. I wanted nothing more than to dethrone these Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. I really would love for somebody to come along this day and age and be better than him. But they're just not. What do you want me to do? They're just not popularity and expand into more media markets. From 1988 to 1995, the league saw oh, six new teams Genius enter the league. Him. And with each new team, the talent pool of the league got a little more diluted and a little mm. more diluted. As far mm. as I'm concerned, this is a perfectly valid point to bring up when discussing whether or not 72 wins validates the 1996 Bulls as the best basketball team of all time. Mm. I don't think it disqualifies them in the same way that I don't think that just taking 72 wins at face value automatically puts them at the top. But when okay. people try to say that Michael Jordan played in a weak era or didn't face tough competition, <laughs> it makes me want to pull my teeth out with pliers. Like the competition was way we more stiff. We know who stiff. Jordan was losing to. So who is he beating once his reign began? John Starks, Charles Oakley, and Patrick Ewing on they the New York Knicks. <laughs> the bad they boy could not Pistons, get over that hump. Boy. Magic Johnson, Clyde Drexler, Dominique Wilkins, Charles Barkley, Alonzo Mourning, Larry mm. Johnson, mm. Tim Hardaway, mm -hmm. Shaquille O'Neal, Penny Hardaway, mm -hmm. Gary Payton, mm -hmm. Sean Kemp, mm -hmm. Chris Webber, mm -hmm. John Stockton, mm -hmm. Carl Malone, mm -hmm. and Reggie Miller. Basically, mm -hmm. Damn! Every relevant basketball player. And you know what? If Oh, Reggie Miller, he just made top 75, huh? And all these players, all of them, you know what I'm saying? Okay, they great. They would have been even greater if it wasn't for Michael. From the 1990s, besides took David all Robinson ain't and nobody Hakeem Olajuwon. And ain't nobody no, get I eat don't off of care to count up how many All-NBA opponents the Bulls saw <laughs> versus someone else. Or how many All-Star teammates Jordan had versus other players or any of that. Because one, the players on that list all passed the smell test of a competitive era with flying colors. Two, I don't care about that stuff. And three, because, like I have said and will continue to say, Everybody has advantages. Everybody. You mm -hmm. become great by capitalizing on the moment oh, no. when okay. everything lines e. up for you. You seize you're the right. opportunity and press the advantage. Exactly. So what if the Bulls were expected to win? They did win. And they were expected to win because Ooh. Michael Jordan tipped the scales in their favor against Every everybody. Night. And as a <laughs> final objection, people who are looking to dethrone Jordan will tell you that he was an asshole to his teammates. 
yeah, that he good. alienated those who he didn't deem worthy or tough good. enough to play Get alongside out of here. him. And it he worked. refused to respect or trust them. And that is a fact. He iron was an iron. asshole. He punched multiple teammates in the face, belittled <laughs> his peers for mishandling passes, and spoke to his teammates in a way that would not fly into... <laughs> that definitely wouldn't fly today. Boy, boy, boy. Iron sharpens iron. If you can't handle this, get out the kitchen, bro. 2020. It's a fact that feels especially stark when you take into account the impact that more reserved and compassionate leaders like Tim Duncan and Bill Russell had on their teams. Okay, is it that is better? It's possible to win in the NBA without being a jerk. Is that better? It's also possible to win while being a jerk. And remember, Jordan wasn't. The thing is, when you do it like those other ways, that when it ain't everything, that how we do it, you ain't winning that other way. You don't get that sustained level of dominance because it's no, it's like order of operations. Like one, two, three, no. Who's number four and number five? You need to make that shot and you need to catch the ball and pass it to me. You know what I'm saying? It's that order of operations where everybody know they place. When you're doing it that other way, it's like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Draymond, is he going to run off KD? I don't know. Who's supposed to take the last shot? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So, I mean, if you want to win, and who you going to put your money on? That's what I want to know. I'm putting my money on Mike. He wasn't lashing out for no reason. He <laughs> wasn't walking into the gym just looking for an ego boost and to demean mm -hmm. someone while he took the day off. He wanted his teammates to work as hard as he did. He had to make them understand that the Bulls could not be playing games because they wanted to win. They had to play as if they needed to win. Because mm -hmm. psychologically, Jordan did. Take Tim Duncan and compare him to Michael Jordan. Bro, this you dude never hear about Tim crazy. Duncan really tearing into some dude in front of the whole team at practice. Uh -huh. You never yeah, hear about Mike not look taking him, look the him opportunity clippers. to chew out a teammate that could have done something better. They are polar opposites when it comes to how they led. But they were both leaders, and both of their styles worked. In the same way that not everybody could play for the Spurs, not everybody could play for the Bulls. If you couldn't Today. handle the team first, no one is above the group approach that the Spurs culture built, you weren't playing with Tim Duncan. And if you couldn't handle getting called out, being pushed past your stress point, and playing without fear, you were not playing with Michael Jordan. They both Facts. shared a common vision of basketball perfection. They set a high standard and expected everyone around them to work as hard as they did at achieving that standard. A mess out of here. You were out. So yeah, Michael wasn't nice. Not everyone could get along with him. If he had spent his years in the league making a villain out of himself and making enemies out of everyone else, toiling away in the postseason without yeah. ever breaking through, yeah. that would be one thing. But yeah. what he did worked. It produced yeah. results. Yeah. Speaking of yeah, I like that. I like that league right there. You know what I'm saying? He dude's too friendly Results. nowadays, boy. The guy won six effing rings, and he won all of them as the best player. I repeat know the three the people who want to discredit Jordan have already found a million ways to get around six rings, but I don't buy any of them. It is literally the best claim that any player has to the throne. He won more championships as the best player on the team than anyone but Bill Russell. But Jordan did it with more teams and more variables that could have set the team back. He True checks that. all of the boxes. He had more success than Wilt, had more statistical prestige than Russell, had a higher no. peak than Bird or Magic, and Ooh. leveraged that peak for more titles as the guy than Kareem. He was the ultimate closer. He lived for the moments that decide games. Yeah. As an individual talent, yeah. he is an A plus. As special I don't think, as you can get. I don't think anybody well is ever going as anyone ever. As yeah, I don't think anybody's going to come close to him now. Like it's Mike and then the, the field. Like whoever you got at second. Like it's Mike and then it's like a leaps and bounds and then it's the field. The team athlete, his place. I don't know if anybody going to come close to him. Just put Listen, him on his own throne. It's impossible to watch Michael Jordan and not romanticize him. No object in the world looks more natural than a basketball in Michael Jordan's hand. <laughs> it's like the ball was designed for him, or like he was made for the ball, or both. Hello. You can't Buckets. appreciate Michael Jordan without hyperbole and superlatives. Mm -hmm. He is the mm -hmm. avatar <laughs> of sport. He Buckets. is competition incarnate. His defining trait remains his insatiable <laughs> need to win. He wanted to win everything. When he came into the league, there were questions about his 
shooting and his defense. So, he became a defensive player of the year and a mid-range marksman. He heard he mm. couldn't win for years, so he took it all out on his competition and led his teams to two separate three-peats. He That's ironed out tough. all of his flaws because he would accept no result but victory. So don't even start to tell me that he wouldn't have developed a three-point shot today. And more than anything, sport is an art form, isn't it? It's expression. Mm. It's theater mm. and it's storytelling. Part of sports is the excitement, the show. And Michael Jordan was the most dynamic show in the world during the end of the century. Part of it too is because the Jordan show wasn't terribly complicated. There wasn't a lot of baggage attached to the Michael Jordan experience. The things Hello. that he did made people believe, if only for a few Ooh. moments, in superheroes. When Goodness spectators gracious. looked at him, hoping to find something to connect with, they found the indomitability of human will. The old sports cliche fully realized that the game Ooh, is won that. by the team who wants it more. And we who all like to think of ourselves more? like that that we are wired like Jordan. But let's face it, we're not all like that. That's what made him special. There's only one Michael Jordan. As for the story, how's this? There's a guy who is knocking on the door of the Pantheon. He has been for a while now. He captures the imagination of everyone who has ever seen him play. He might well be the most talented player to ever lace up a pair of shoes, but he okay, just LeBron. can't seem to break through. He loses in the playoffs against the same team over and over and over. Every year, he gets a little bit closer and a little bit closer until finally he breaks through. His talent is justified with one, two, three championships all in a row. It hadn't been done in 30 years. Now there's talk about how this guy might not just be the best talent, he might be the best ever. And as he's climbed the mountain, he has become the most famous athlete in the world. And then That's he retires only to come back a year and a half later. In his first full year back from retirement, they win the title. He is back. And then they do it again. By now, he is practically lapping every other player historically. Every image of Michael Jordan in recent memory is of his team holding the trophy. By 1998, he had won five championships in seven years, three in a row, and then back to back. And now it was mm. the end, the last year of everyone's contracts. The team's blowing it up. This is their last ride, the last dance. They're <laughs> running on fumes, <laughs> but they climb all the way back up the mountain to the top. They're back in the finals. The target on their backs has never been bigger. The pressure has never been heavier. In game six, on the road, looking to wrap up an unprecedented second three-peat in a game with more people watching than in any other game, it goes down to the wire. The Utah Jazz won't go away. Unfortunately <sighs> for them, they're playing Michael against Jordan. Michael Jordan, the team. Godly. who saved his best for last. That's crazy. Here this is, is his Jordan's best play, final shot and it's his Chicago final Bowl. shot, too. Ah! Get off me! Buckets! He really ended it like that. And you gonna tell me that anybody is better than that? You must have lost your mind, man. It's Michael Jordan Dinnerfield. You can have whoever at second. I don't care. As long as MJ is first, I'm cool with it.